Welcome back to Key West Waterman, guys. Real quick, uh, I wanted to share a thought about a conversation I just had with a subscriber uh, before we dive into today's episode, pun intended. Um, I just finished up with a charter today, um, and I was down at the, while I was down at the boat, uh, I had a nice gentleman come up and pretty much tell me how much he loved the channel, he loved the videos, uh, just some words of encouragement that he was sharing, and I really do appreciate that when you guys come say hi. It really keeps me going, especially the days that I'm tired and I just wanna sleep. Um, the days I have off, it just it keeps me going to get out there and make more videos. So I do appreciate when you guys do that. But um, one of the things he said, and it's something I honestly I get pretty regularly. Is people message me. Um, he was like, "Dude, you got to get deer meat for dinner on your channel." Which obviously I've thought of that. Uh, he's the the biggest outdoor channel there is right now. Um, that guy's absolutely crushing it. It's amazing. But uh, I'm flattered that as many of you even think that I'm at a level where I could host someone like that. That's honestly flattering. Um, but number two. That guy's inbox is probably brimming with emails of people reaching out to him, trying to uh, you know do collaborations and just make videos with other people. That's the biggest thing you can do as a YouTube creator starting out is to get on, get with someone you know who's got a big following and and um, get your channel started that way. So I I got to thinking about it and I really think it's a long shot, but I got to thinking on my drive home all the hippie stuff Madeline, my girlfriend, tells me about. You've got to speak it to existence, the universe is listening, and all that good stuff. So I figured, what the heck, why not give it a shot? Um, but I don't think me reaching out is probably the best way to do it. Um, I think if Mr. Deer Meat is anything like myself, uh, he cares about the subscribers and a ton of you guys have asked me about it. So I'll leave it up to you guys. If you can make some noise on his uh, YouTube channel, if you can make some noise on his Instagram, leave some comments or something, I'd be happy to have him out. So I'll put it out in the universe publicly. Mr. Deer Meat, if you'd like to come down to Key West, I'd love to have you on the boat. Uh, I hear you're a pretty avid spear fisherman. Uh, it's quite a bit of what I do. Um, Got May 1st coming up. May 1st and 2nd, group or opener. I blocked those days off the film. So uh, worst case, nothing happens. And I'm going to keep making videos. Uh, best case, I'd have Mr., uh, you know, deer meat out. And it'd be, a, I think, a pretty epic episode. So, um, But enough of me talking. I uh, appreciate it, guys. And uh, check this one out. Hope you like it. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Um, as I said uh, in previous videos, I'm starting to block days so I can film more. Today is one of those days. Uh, unfortunately, the weatherman was a little wrong. We had... Planned ahead of time to come do some spear fishing. Um, there's a front moving in. It was supposed to be here around four or five o'clock. It is eight in the morning and it's here. So they were a few hours off, but it is what it is. We're out here already. We've got a lot of gas and a lot of ice and a lot of spear guns. Got the boys with me, Justin and Kevin. Um, we're almost to the first spot. We're starting to suit up. If you guys like the videos, make sure to hit subscribe and hit the like button. It helps me a ton. Um, but yeah, we're getting in the water. We're doing some spear fishing. We're deep in the Gulf of Mexico where the fish are big and the sharks are bigger. Um, looking for cobia, snappers, and whatever else swims by. Let's rock and roll. Oh. So I wanted to share some of my thoughts on some of these dives and fish. Uh, this was actually the first fish I shot. The shot was a little higher than I had intended, um, but sometimes it happens. And this is a situation that is not good, but something that you often face with hunting cobia is uh, line management and getting wrapped in lines. This is a bad scenario. The fish comes flying at me with a shark chasing it. Uh, gets the line pretty bundled up there around my arm. You can see it on my right hand. I did everything in my power to shake it off. Uh, that's a bad situation. You do not want to be near that line. Do everything in your power to swim away from it. Right here kind of looks like a cluster, but I assure you I was not in the line uh, doing everything in my power to stay away from it. But I ended up securing this fish, so got a little lucky there. So after that first fish, I was being very particular about my shots. I really like to stone these if I can. Didn't really like this shot. So I hesitated there just for a second. Um, after kind of being a little more selective, I, I preached to Kevin all morning about being selective. He had never shot a cobia before. 
about being patient and selective. Uh, I missed my first stone shot, and he stones the first cobia he ever sees, which was amazing. Felt a little better about this shot. This fish kind of sat there and gave me the, the right away. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get the stone shot. Kind of just playing the drag here. Don't want to horse him too much, but I was pretty comfortable with this shot. I thought it was going to hold. Um, in hindsight, I obviously should have uh, called in a second shot, but I didn't end up doing it, unfortunately. And this fish tore out, which I really hate uh, injuring fish that I don't harvest, but sometimes it happens. Even more than before, I'm being super selective with my shots. This is a very beefy cobia, if you've ever seen them in the water. This fish is easily over 40 pounds. I uh, just didn't like it. That running away shot is very hard. It can be very difficult. I uh, might have got lucky, but I wasn't comfortable. Like I said, I'm going for stone shots here. This fish kind of does the same thing. Kind of right when I'm about to pull the trigger, does a little twitch uh, and swims away. And it just, I wasn't comfortable. I was looking for that bigger fish since we were going commercially. You know, you want the heaviest fish. You get the most, you know, the biggest price rather. Um, just fish everywhere. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of those days that quite honestly you dream of. I say that all the time, but it truly was. This is a pretty cool clip I wanted to share. If you've ever used the GoPro, uh, they're very zoomed out. This fish, I was, this fish, this shark, I was trying to see how close he would get and uh, he ended up getting crazy close. If you use the GoPro, you know how zoomed out they are. I'm telling you, that shark was no more than two feet away at the most. Um, but I spent some time trying to be selective here again. This fish just gave me the perfect broadside right away. Didn't really run, didn't do one of those twitches. Um, I ended up finding out that the banana gun shaft was bent, so I switched over to the black gun um, and put a nice holding shot in that fish. Tried to get the throat on these cobia. They normally come back to life at some point, even if you stone them. Enjoy the rest of the episode, guys. I hope you learned something. He's still green. You got one shaft in, I pulled the other one out. Got him. Got him. Yep. Hold on. Holy hell. So all hell broke loose. Right when we jumped in, Kobe's everywhere. Like a day I've never never even seen. It just got to a point where we were just swimming around looking at him. There was just that many. And uh, like I said, weatherman got us. It's pretty gnarly out here. But we got our Kobe limit. They're all big ones too. <laughs> Look at that. Definitely 40s. <laughs> Kevin got his first. Uh, Justin probably his personal best. We got a commercial limit of Kobe. We're gonna probably check one more spot. We got a little bit of a run, so maybe one more spot and um, we're gonna head in. <laughs> A day that I will never forget. Holy moly. I never seen him that thick. Unreal. Got a little breezy. That is a wrap. Last spot was kind of a bust. Just kudas and sharks and other whatcha who's it's. A little sporty sun finally came out. Got a little bit of a ride in, so we are gonna get going. Get back to the market and get these weighed up. I have a commercial breakdown for you. It's been a while, so happy to share one. I'll see you guys there. So we are here at Keys Fresh Seafood World Headquarters. Um, this is where I sell all my fish. I get a lot of questions about where do I, if I'm not going on the boat, where can I come buy fresh fish? This is the place, Keys Fresh Seafood uh, on Stock Island. Tell them I sent you, They'll, you'll still pay full price, but at least you'll know your fish will be fresh. Uh, the cool thing about this place is it is owned and operated by fishermen. So um, you're helping people stay working. And um, like I said, you know your fish is fresh. So once we get um, get the check for this, I'll, I'll break it down for you guys and we'll um, see how we did today. All right, I am back. 
I have a commercial breakdown for you. It's been some time since I've done one of these, so I'm excited to share it. Um, I know you guys like this information, so I enjoy sharing it with you. Uh, but before I dive into these numbers, I did have one quick thought that I wanted to share. It's probably not going to be that quick, but um, I think if you're wondering what that sound is, Tipsy is eating what's left of a T-bone. Um, I think of all of the videos that I put out, I think the commercial ones probably received the most negative feedback, and that's fine. I get it. Um, as long as there's people, there are going to be problems. You can put anything out on the internet. It doesn't matter what it is. Someone's going to disagree with you. That's fine. It does not hurt my feelings, I promise. Um, but instead of arguing with those people, I thought maybe I could take an opportunity to try and educate some of you and maybe help you see a little bit of perspective for those of you who do see these videos negatively um, and aren't as educated when it comes down to commercial fishing and what we're doing, why we're doing it. Um, and like I said, hopefully perspective. Uh, perspective is a very powerful thing. Without commercial fishermen like myself, countless others in the Florida Keys, and not to mention all around the world, um, your average everyday person that doesn't have a boat, doesn't go fishing, would not have access to fresh fish. They just wouldn't. Whether it's at your favorite restaurant, the local food store, local seafood market, there would be no fresh fish coming in. Um, so just keep that in mind. And I think of all of the ways that you can commercially harvest fish, I think spear fishing is one of the, if not the most sustainable selective way to do it uh, we have absolutely no bycatch we're not killing anything unnecessarily we're not dragging big nets we're not long lining we're only taking the fish that we are targeting um, so before you get on the comments and tell me that i'm this terrible person destroying the oceans um, maybe just keep that in mind we're i'm just one guy taking a couple hundred pounds here and there um, just honestly trying to enjoy my life and enjoy the process of making a living and enjoy my time doing it so uh, keep that in mind but uh, that's my rant. Hopefully it didn't take too long. Let's get down to the numbers. So we went out for Cobia, landed right on them. Just first spot everywhere. We, it turned almost into an eco tour because they were just swimming around us. It was insane. Um, we ended up selling $1,075 worth of Cobia. I think it was just over 200 pounds if I remember correctly. Um, $260 of fuel, $20 in snacks, so a daily profit. Keep this in mind. I've said this in other videos. This is a daily profit. This isn't going straight into the bank account. A daily profit of $795. Um, so all in all, a great day. You know, Made some money, had some fun with my friends, got some great footage for you guys. I keep getting a ton of emails about people asking how to get into commercial fishing. What can I do to get started? Um, and by in no way am I trying to shoot down anyone's dreams, but... Um, commercial fishing is very, very difficult. One, it's very difficult. Um, the work itself will kill you if you do it every day. It's some of the most intense work I've ever done. There's a reason I do it less than probably 15 days a year. Um, two, it's extremely hard to be profitable every day. Having a good fishing day is one thing. Going out and doing it every day and making money every day if you're not one of the best fishermen around is, is even a task in itself. And three, it's extremely expensive to get started. Just for example, uh, the grouper snapper permits, I'm not sure what they're going for right now, but a while back they were going just grouper snapper. We're going for about $70,000, $75,000 just for the permit. I don't own mine, I lease mine. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know, I, I'm all about supporting dreams. If you want to be a commercial fisherman, that's great. Unless you're born into it, my the advice I have is work on someone else's commercial boat. Um, Try and you know find a deckhand job or a mate job on another commercial boat for at least two or three years, kind of get your bearings and see what you're doing and go from there. But um, that's all I got this time. Some things coming up. We've got May 1st, uh, shallow water grouper opens for diving. Very excited about that. I close, I uh, blocked May 1st and 2nd, so I won't have charters. I'm going to be just filming. I know you guys love those episodes, so I'm going to do that. Um, as the Summer gets closer, the deep dropping is going to get better, so I'll be doing more and more deep dropping, um, and uh, send me any other ideas you guys have. As always, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching, I really do, and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying making these videos, so keep watching them, and I'll keep making them, and I will uh, see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Later.